I succeeded at escaping the hotel as it suffered its final death throes and went up in a heap of primeval dust. As it cleared, all that was left of the establishment was a pile of bricks and smoking debris. My mind was still wrapped around the surreality of the situation. The pale, hairless appearance of the man, all the residents of the town's bizarre skin complexions, how that woman fought herself when she was deciding whether to eat me or not. None of them were humans, but arachnid, hideous carbon copies that struggle to be approachable, I shook my head. Whatever the case, I had to leave Vicksburg, but not before taking Narcissa with me. After all, I could not live with myself if I knowingly abandoned someone in this wretched town. High-pitched screams filled the empty air, alerting me. Crap, more of the neighbors were coming obviously because they heard the collapse of the old building. Without much contemplation, I hid in the alleyway and bit my lower lip. Their gravely guttural voices were like waterlogged bodies with their constant squelching and damp noises. Cautiously, I peered from a corner of an abandoned store scene for cloaked Vicksburg citizens staggering on their legs. If only I could decipher what they were saying to each other only for curiosity's sake. As they chatted, one of the hooded figures stopped and slipped his hood from his bald head. I heard what sounded like mandibles clanging on each other when I noticed he was getting closer. I backed further into the alleyway out of concern that he had seen me. The hissing reached its apex with his long, spider-like fingers scraping the edge of the building. I shimmied down to get as close to the ground I could. Even though it was night time, the creature's glare burned holes in the back of my head. He entered the alley, sliding his appendages in the dark void. We were so close, I smelled his pungent breath. Eventually, something else caught his attention, and he left with his group. I wiped the sweat off my brow and sighed in relief. With them distracted, I could make my escape attempt. However, before I could continue the next phase of my plan, a feminine voice echoed through the streets. My eyes widened in shock. Narcissa. I peeped from behind the dilapidated wall and almost doubled over. Narcissa was captured by the Vicksburg anomalies with her distress. Her arms flailed around with the feeble hope of striking one of her threats. I had to do something, but what could I do? I rummaged through my mind for a solution, but Narcissa's screams were making me anxious. Swallowing my pride, I sprinted towards the assembly and balled my fists. I swung wildly in the air, spashing my knuckles over and over their gelatinous mass felt like I was punching raw meat. The more I railed against them, the Vicksburg anomalies gradually lost their corporeal forms and disintegrated, exploding into millions of skittering spiders. Narcissa glared in absolute horror upon seeing these humanoid beings dissolve into pulsating, rampant marbles on thousands of stalks. What? Is this? There was no time to explain. I grabbed her wrist and urged her to move. Her warm, silky hand felt amazing to grope, but I threw that thought to the back of my mind. My heart galloped behind my chest as my breathing became taxing. My lungs wheezed and buckled beneath my rib cage. The sound of thousands of bony, fleshless legs scraping the ground reverberated on the streets. Everyone in this town, all those monstrosities linked together mimicking the basic movements of the human body. Narcissus shared an equal look of dread. What should we do? 
She grasped my arm and squeezed up against it. Her soft breasts felt amazing around my wedged arm, driving me crazy. Her warm breath sent a chill down my spine. Even when she was being terrified, that statuesque build and her intense glare of hers made her impeccable. We have to find a place to hide and wait for things to blow over. The blonde woman scratched her head. If we are looking for a refuge, I know just the place. 